Awful images of death and destruction coming out of Israel and Gaza are heartbreaking. Hundreds are being held hostage by Hamas terrorists, and a lot of people are concerned that things could escalate into World War III. Oh, God. You can't have World War III. It, that's the end of everything. Here to tell us how the U.S. is helping to find a path to peace in the Middle East is White House National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby. Welcome to the show, John. So, you know, I mean, we're all horrified by what I just read, to tell you the truth. Uh, and the entire region feels like a tinderbox right now. To put it bluntly, how worried should Americans be about a much wider war breaking out? What I would tell Americans to understand is that everything President Biden is doing, everything over the last couple of weeks, uh, is designed to prevent that exact scenario, to prevent escalation, to prevent any other actor from trying to jump in here and, and deepen and widen this conflict. We've moved more uh, military resources into the Eastern Med. Now we're going to move a carrier strike group uh, all the way into the, uh, the Middle East region as well. Uh, we are sending strong messages uh, privately and, of course, publicly to any other actor in the region that this is not the time to try to take advantage of it. Admiral Kirby, thanks so much for being with us. Um, earlier today, the U.S. struck two targets in Syria linked to Iran. This was in retaliation to um, Iranian-backed militias attacking our forces in Iraq and Syria, how, um, which resulted in traumatic brain injuries to nearly 20 service members. Um, how concerned should we be that the U.S. may have to engage with Iran directly? Well, again, everything we're, we're trying to do is, is prevent a, a broader conflict. And, and we, as you saw in the Secretary of Defense's statement last night, we don't seek uh, a conflict with Iran. We're not looking to escalate uh, into some sort of uh, period of hostilities here with Iran. That said, uh, to, your, to your question and your point, they did take uh, a number of attacks against our troops and our facilities in Iraq and Syria, about evenly split, split between the two, uh, and there were some injuries caused to our troops. We've got to make sure that our troops can continue to go after ISIS in those two countries, which they're doing, and they can do it safely and effectively. That means protecting them, and that means making sure that we send a strong message to the IRGC, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, that basically is responsible for sourcing and training these groups that are firing these rockets. Enough's enough. You got to stop. We're going to do what we have to do to protect ourselves. Israel is still gearing up for a ground invasion, but more than 200 hostages, likely including Americans, remain in captivity, and families are saying their patience has run out. Can you tell us anything about the reported efforts and the status to free this larger group of hostages? About as far as I can go today is to tell you that we're working on this literally around the clock, and we've got the special envoy on the ground, David Satterfield, uh, from the State Department, is, is working this very, very hard. Uh, and, of course, we're working it here at the NSC and at the State Department. Uh, we're trying to get all the hostages released. They, they shouldn't be held at all, of course, to begin with. And we know that there's still some Americans in that hostage pool. Uh, but I think you can understand we've got to be a little careful what we say publicly because uh, these right. discussions are ongoing, and we don't want to say anything that's going to jeopardize the chances of getting them home with their families. Admiral Kirby, this is Anna. And before I, I ask my question, I just want to say thank you to uh, the Biden administration, to you, to the president, for the moral clarity you have demonstrated throughout these weeks. At a time when other parts of our government, like the House, have been a hot mess, I really appreciate the leadership coming out of the administration. But the question is, several hundred American citizens are also trapped in Gaza while the border yeah. is sealed. The U.S. has now joined calls for a humanitarian pause to get aid in. But are we any closer to getting these Americans safe passage out? We are working that also very, very hard, on, And that's a, tough, that's a tough problem to solve. Getting, it's hard enough to get aid in, and we don't have anywhere near as much aid going in as we need to. But getting uh, people out, particularly Americans, uh, is proving to be a, a tougher uh, nut to crack. But that doesn't mean we're not wor working on this very hard, again, with all our partners in the region and those who have open lines of communication with Hamas, which we do not, because that's an important player in this whole process. Hamas has got to be willing to open up that gate on their side uh, and be willing and be willing to let to let people out. But we want to get those Americans. You're right. It's about several hundred of them. Uh, and we're doing everything we can to see if we can get them safe passage. Admiral Kirby, this is Sunny. Um, hospitals in Gaza are reportedly shutting down due to lack of supplies and fuel as aid is trickling in. Surgeons are using vinegar instead of anesthetics, things like that. Um, during a briefing, you were pressed on the president's comments recently about innocent lives lost just being the price of war. President Obama has warned that this conflict could harden 
Palestinian attitudes for generations. Is there a red line where America would say this response is not proportional? Well, I think it wouldn't be prudent for me to get into red line discussions. I, I can tell you, though, uh, that from the very beginning, we have had discussions with our Israeli counterparts about the need to respect innocent life, about the need for humanitarian assistance to get in, including fuel, uh, and about the need for them to be careful in their targeting so that they can minimize uh, the risk to civilians on the ground who Hamas won't let leave, uh, as well as collateral damage on infrastructure like hospitals. So we're working on that very, very hard, and we've been very clear uh, that, you know, what separates us and Israel from Hamas is that we respect innocent life and we respect the law of war and our expectations are that the Israelis are going to conduct themselves uh, in, in that regard. Now, the U.S. has seen about a 400 percent rise in anti-Semitic uh, incidents since the start of the war, and the Department of Homeland Security is warning Americans, particularly Jewish and Muslim communities, to be on heightened alert. With so many Americans on edge, particularly in places like college campuses, what is the U.S. doing to combat hate here at home? Well, one of the things, I mean, just last May, we, we launched a U.S. national strategy for uh, countering anti-Semitism, and obviously we are deeply concerned about the continued threats to the Muslim community here in the United States. Uh, there's no question that uh, there could be actors out there that want to take advantage of what's going on between Israel and Hamas and spill it over here to the streets of America. And we, we, we sort of saw that threat coming early on, right after, uh, in just a couple of days after Hamas did their atrocious attacks on October 7th and started working directly with state and local authorities in, you know, having a federal connection with them to help identify potential threats and be able to disrupt them, you know, before they actually can, can anybody could take action. But this is something that the president is laser focused on and deeply concerned about. And he's got the whole team here at the National Security Council m making sure that we're doing everything we can at the local level. Just to echo Anna Navarro, thank you, Joe Biden, for being there. White House correspondent, National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby, thank you so much for being with us.